Greetings. Welcome to uh, another Wednesday evening at the Clear Mountain Monastery community. And today we are so happy to have uh, Lumpur Pasano with us here, actually, in, in Seattle. So Lumpur, thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, I'm going to read a little bit of your biography. I think it'll be... <laughs> I, I think it'll be relevant, because we've got questions which kind of deal with the early parts of your life. And Okay. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Isn't there anything more interesting we can talk about? <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll, it'll shade into. <laughs> so, so Lumpur Pasano was born in Manitoba, Canada in 1949. Uh, Lumpur is the most senior Western disciple in Venerable Ajahn Chah tradition in the United States and the most senior in the world after Ajahn Sumedho and Ajahn K. Madamo. After finishing his studies at the University of Winnipeg, Lumpur traveled to Asia through Turkey, Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, to India, Nepal, and finally to Thailand, where he traveled to Wat Plain Vipassana Meditation Monastery in Chiang Mai. After a month-long silent meditation retreat, Lumpur took what he thought would just be a temporary ordination in January of 1974 at the age of 24. That temporary ordination grew in length and profundity when Lumpur traveled with his teacher to meet Lumpur Cha. And that was in 75? No. No, that, was... no, that isn't quite how it worked. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I first met Lopa Cha like toward, I ordained January 4th, 1974. And then uh, I, I kept hearing about the Thai forest tradition, kept hearing about Lopa Cha. And so late January or early February, I went up to Ubon and uh, went to Wapapong and uh, paid respects to Lumpur Cha. And I spent about a month there. And uh, I got, I had the blessings of my preceptor, or my teacher. I wasn't my preceptor. <clears throat> my teacher at Wat Plain. He really encouraged me to go. Uh, and then, uh, but then that was when uh, the story of me meeting, my first meeting with Ajahn Chah and, and him just, you know, I, I bow and I'm a complete newbie to everything. <laughs> and, uh, and then he just looks at me for the longest time and he said, you know, very kind of deadpan, uh, you want to stay here, you have to stay at least five years. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, that registered. <laughs> but and just seemed like impossible and uh, and so that that I but I was really drawn to to what upon to Lopo uh, and uh, his uh, that's also <clears throat> during that time uh, I mean there would have been the one Prat Lunar Observance Days, but there was also Maga Puja in February. And, and that, in those days, Maga Puja was when all of the branch monasteries would come together. And there was only like, say at that time, maybe 16, 17 branch monasteries. Compared to now, when there are over 300. Now there's over 300, yeah. <clears throat> and, but still, you know, you get, 200 monks together in one place and then so many lay people and they're all uh, practicing and listening to Dhamma and 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 I can't keep up <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm young I'm enthusiastic and and it's just in you're know, sitting on this concrete floor I couldn't couldn't put I didn't have the wherewithal so anyway, but so then after a month, I just, uh, I mean, I can't commit to, to this, even though I was really inspired and, you know, again, both in terms of Lopo Cha, but then also the, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the interface and the interconnection between the just really seeing how it worked, the lay community and the monastic community supporting each other and seeing that 
like monasticism was not some you know running off to the forest and and, uh, and being a hermit but actually you know being of real service uh, to the community and and then seeing the sincerity and commitment of the of the lay community was was very very both inspiring and humbling and uh, so really so, but uh, just yeah the idea of five years was i mean when you're 24 I mean, it's like the the rest of your life it's, it's just who can plan that far ahead uh, so then i uh, i went and there was a, a a small place that i had heard about and and uh, in central thailand that i went and stayed at uh, Wat Sai Nam in Supanburi and then I ended up staying there and uh, ended up spending the range retreat uh, the teacher asked me to stay because <clears throat> I just kept thinking of Ajahn Chah all the time mm -hmm. and so then I went to, uh, <clears throat> I actually wrote and asked the Lupo um wrote back that uh, uh, gave me permission to come for he'd asked Lopo Chang uh, and got permission to come for the range retreat but then just before the range retreat my teacher asked he said you know I'm really busy traveling and going back and forth between this monastery which he was just setting up and his, his, and his sort of his mother monastery which he was just leaving and uh, he said uh, why don't you spend the range retreat and I can give more time to teaching. So, so, and it was a very sincere request. And I thought, well, that, yeah, sure. <clears throat> because they've been great looking after me. And I had, I, I had very good practice there. Uh, the environment was very good. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, but, but, but I was just feeling uh, kind of drawn to, and, and the forest tradition being getting that fuller training in in uh, the lifestyle in Vinaya as well as the the practice itself. Um, so it was after the rains retreat uh, that uh, and that that my teacher then said, uh, "Wait!" And then I, I've got an invitation up in that area after the Vaitsa for teaching, and I can take you and. Get, to take you to, to Ajahn Chah. October 74. Uh, it was uh, late November, November, early December of, of, uh, of 74. <clears throat> so that's when I went and he brought me in and uh, gave me the Lupa uh, So it was very beautiful. <clears throat> well, that actually touches on a, a point uh, that feels quite significant in terms of, it sounds like the experience at the monastery you spent the, the boss at before returning to Long Cha was quite meditation focused and, yes. and technique focused and um, speaking to this uh, you know monasteries and places you can go and practice in this more as you put it full or holistic way or it's quite a new phenomenon in the west yeah. um, how, what would you say in terms of uh, trying to speak to someone who's only had retreat experience and where that's been their metric and um you know really where their practice has been measured by meditative attainment or calm based on a technique um versus this holistic approach you're talking about if i'm at the ajahn challenge monastery is like Funny, what's yeah. unique about what that? you find about it is that it's actually following the eightfold path that the buddha <laughs> <laughs> in his very first sermon <laughs> it's not the one fold path. Yeah, it's, it's an eightfold path that, that's laid out that you've the aspects of right view and right right resolve and you know, right right thought pro you know, right 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 thought formations, right action, right speech, right livelihood. How do you get on with people? How do you interact with the world? How do you take responsibility for your actions and your place in the world? Uh, and 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 as well as the medit, it's not a Buddhism is not a meditation technique. Uh, it's 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 a it's a it's a it's a training in one's whole life, body, speech, and mind. Uh, that's what Sila Samadhi Panya is like in the 
the, the tricycle, the three, the triple training is sila, samadhi, panya. So like your virtue, integrity, training and in your actions, your <clears throat> development of meditation, of right effort, right mindfulness, right samadhi. <clears throat> your training in wisdom. And so it's not about a technique of meditation, because uh, that's you know it's one dimensional. When as human beings we're a bit more than one dimension. If, um, a follow up on that one, poor is, um, you know, some I think I know some people who have touched the fruits or seen the fruits of that fully developed Eightfold Path, Noble Eightfold Path in someone, or have been to a monastery and felt what it feels like to live in line with that and find the life that they they return to at home is very distant from it. And because of obligations or comic ties or whatever, aren't able to kind of bring their life into alignment with the Dhamma in the way they would want. And maybe there's too many things going on or a job or what would you tell to someone with one foot in the monastery and one foot on a banana peel, um, or who's not able to kind of feel like their life is in line with the Dhamma in the way they want, don't know what to do? Well, I mean, I think nobody knows what they're doing. With it. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, you talk to people in the monastery, oh, am I doing the right thing? <laughs> <laughs> You've heard a lot of me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so... You know, doubt is 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 ordinary, and and just uh, I, having Kalyana Mitta is is really um, just so important to to the uh, uh, cultivation of the path and cultivation of clarity. Uh, that sense of of having, you know, drawing close to good spiritual friendships, and and having that co contact, and of course the Buddha places that you know very you know in in very much in the forefront of whether it's monastic practice or lay practice mm -hmm. <clears throat> also you reflect in terms of you know what are the uh, like the the four factors of stream entry mm -hmm. you know your two external factors two internal factors uh, that that uh, Saporisa Sangseva, really, the, that association with with noble beings, good beings, mm. uh, good, yeah, good human beings, like good real, mm. real human human beings, not sort of, um, you know, complicated or, or living, um, um, you know, not so skillful lives. And and said Dhamma Savana, the hearing of the good Dhamma, hearing your good teachings, drawing close to those where you can you can receive and be in contact with with good teachings and training and it's just so those external circumstances are incredibly important. So as a lay person to be able to be uh, a, yeah, attentive to, to creating conditions that are, are, are conducive. Are they going to be perfect? It's, you know, there's no such thing as perfect. Um, and I've lived long enough in a monastery to know that most monasteries aren't perfect. Uh, you know, so that, that uh, <clears throat> you know, so much of it is, is how do I live in a way that leads to contentment and, and clarity. Uh, it's, it's just so, so important and to, to not be, either be, you know, beating oneself up with, with uh, uh, doubt and, and regret or, or second guessing oneself and, and you know, all of the should haves that I, and should be that that we uh, that we we torture ourselves with, uh, and learning how to 
uh, uh, this is the way it is, and how do I how do I live with this? Uh, it was like on the. I was on the uh, on the plane today, the person next to me. Um, um, uh, he said, well, I, I was saying, oh, yeah, because yeah. he was a little, maybe a little bit younger than me, which means he was old. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, uh, and I was saying, oh, uh, you know, are you, um, uh, you must be retired now. We had a nice conversation, a very good guy, very salt of the earth kind of character. <laughs> and uh, he said, well, I've been, 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 yeah, I've been, been, I had to take retirement. Uh, almost 20 years ago, because I, I, I had an accident. Uh, it was at work for like a pre-trimming. The dangerous profession. Yeah, and, and one of these big buckets, he was about 40 foot in the air, and it collapsed. And uh, he said, yeah I, broke, yeah, I broke my neck, broke my back, broke my shoulder, broke my pelvis. Um, and I said, poof, you, you must have a lot of you know, you look like you've healed well, although I'm sure you've got, um, you, know, uh, uh, you know, difficult issues with your with your body. He says, well, yeah, well, I could, I could cry every day, but uh, what's the point? I better, it's better to just get on with life. <laughs> you know, so that you know, it's, it's and it was, you know, sorry. Yeah, I just choose what to pay attention to. You know, what is it that's gonna, gonna make me happy and make me feel that I'm living a useful life? Well, on that, in terms of paying attention to things, you talk about coming from the meditation monastery where you ordained, um, where you had a lot of time for meditation, coming to Ajahn Chah's and then just seeing the beauty of the interaction between the lay people and the monastics. And I'm curious how your vision for what a healthy monastery and by extension a healthy monk like what what that means you know because you, you see people come to a monastery and they've just got I mean myself definitely you know included you know you come to a monastery and you got a, a very high ideal that a monastery should be you know just meditation or but it seems like you were able to to see the integrated like the essential uh, essential aspect of well that was yeah, but that's my bias. Of <laughs> 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 course, I'm right. <laughs> right, but did you did you come to, when you were traveling across Europe and Asia? Like, you left you left Canada, you know, to come, and you were leaving, going to the complete opposite side of the world. So you were. I was looking for something. I didn't really know what I was looking for. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I didn't really know what I was looking for. Um, I knew I was drawn to Buddhism because when I, I mean, I, 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 I when I was, <coughs> uh, was a student, uh, uh, I did, um, do a, a course of world religions and, and, uh, and Buddhism just leaped out to me as something that, that spoke truth. And then I, and then the rest of my time in <coughs> university was trying to take um, courses that I would be able to somehow access some sort of Buddhist theme in some way, shape, or form, uh, at least a little bit. And, and then, and then I did a lot of side reading and, and just try. But in those days, it was really hard to find. Yeah, any books and, and I, I you know I went to university at University of Winnipeg and just you know and even now it's a backwater in those days <laughs> you know, it certainly was as well so um, it was hard to you know I would I'd go to you know the, uh, our library didn't have a, a, a huge amount of, of Buddhist themed uh, literature or the public library I go to the uh, much larger university University of Manitoba and they have a much bigger library so I go out there and try, try to track down books and, and I was interested in, 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 in what Buddhism had to offer 
<clears throat> I never came across any practice of meditation, even though it was sort of you know, talked about in the books, and, but it was still very theoretical to me. <clears throat> More in, t- in terms of bringing the theory down to, to practice, um, would, you, would you tell the story of the tiger? In Dautam? Or, sorry, what would... Yeah, Dautam? Yeah, Dautam, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that was my... Uh, <clears throat> that was my first long Tudong. Uh, it was like a full year uh, on Tudong and by myself a lot of the... most of the time. <clears throat> and that was the year I found Dautam. Uh, and uh, they built me a kuti. <clears throat> um, so I was by myself. It'd probably be a kilometer or two from the village, a kilometer or so from the village. So it's far enough to be completely isolated, <clears throat> but fairly easy to go along from. <clears throat> and. Uh, and they they built me a great uh, walking meditation path, and it was I wore it really smooth, <laughs> and uh, and then one night I'm on my my, my jungle path, <clears throat> and I kind of hear a rustling, and then I get a smell, which I had heard the description of the smell of a tiger. Uh, but then all of a sudden I got this smell and then you know, my hair stood on end and I was like, oh, that's a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then I could, and it, because it was, a, I couldn't quite see it. I mean, it's this very thick jungle. I mean, you've been to Dao Dao. Uh, and uh, it's in, the, it was in, I was in the bottom of a, a little, a little side valley, uh, so a little little stream that went past, which was my water supply. So very lush and very thick, and and uh, uh, but I could hear it moving around me. So but so uh, and then yeah, fear was was visceral, uh, and. But then what, what came to mind uh, was the, uh, uh, the sutta where the, it's in the Majjhima Nikaya. Bayabharava? Bayabharava sutta, sutta number four, Majjhima four yeah, or six so. or something, I can't remember. Something like that. Anyway, and, and then it's the, the Buddha recounting his own training of going out into the forest and experiencing fear, fear and trepidation. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and then what he did was uh, continue practicing in the, in the uh, posture that he was in until the, the mood of fear dissipated. Mm. So then I said, well, okay, well, that's what the Buddha did. Maybe I should try it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I continued to, to just do walking back and forth, and spreading loving kindness and trying to calm the mind and settle the mind and come back to my breathing, come back to my body, um, and uh, try not to get obsessed with the, <laughs> the, the reality of having a tiger right nearby. <laughs> And uh, and then I walk for you know hard to tell how long. I mean, time was was uh, a bit of a at a standstill at that point. I didn't walk for quite a while, and then then really it was it was quite easeful. And then the, the kind of the the presence of Tiger fell away, and what was left was a was mindfulness and, and, and clear comprehension and, and uh, a feeling of clarity. So I thought, well, okay, then clear now. I could probably change postures, and, and I'll go. So I went and sat on my. I had a um, my kuti had a little sleeping room, 
and it had a, a little veranda completely open. So I went and sat <coughs> on the veranda. And, uh, cause the impulse was to go into the room and close the door as if that would help because <laughs> it's pretty flimsy, uh, dwelling place, but still the mind looks for such things. And, and, uh, but anyway, so I went and sat and, uh, and then, and then, you know, sitting, meditation, breathing, uh, you know, breathing in, breathing out, and then, and then sort of, that's a tiger. That's <laughs> <laughs> it's still that, and then it was just this fear come up again, and then sort of, well, what would I do if a tiger attacked? And then it was just sort of like then all the stories of, of, kind of the capability of tigers came to me and said, well, you just die. <laughs> That's all. That's, you know, that, that's, uh, you know, human beings are just incredibly puny compared to, to a tiger. So I said, you just have to give up. So then that was, uh, okay. It's just give, it was a theme of, of giving up and, and uh, uh, give myself to practice, give myself to the training, give myself to the triple gem, give myself to the seedless mighty by and the virtue, and then we'll see what happens. And I'm still here, so, so it worked pretty spoiler. good. Spoiler. <laughs> spoiler. Spoiler. Yeah, spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have one point for about 15 more minutes. People can put questions in the chat. <clears throat> um, uh, we've got our first question here, and I might ask another one if uh, we have time. But um, Nasco, now on here on, if you have questions as well. Mm -hmm. um, but our first question is: um, Do you practice now also? If so, how do you practice? Interesting. Huh? If so, what? How do you practice? Huh? Do you practice? Do you can do you still practice? And if so, how? <laughs> I, I breathe in, I breathe out, and I'm, so I, I'm, you know, mindfulness, clear comprehension applies, you know, it doesn't really matter how, how old you are, how, how long you've been in the road, you continue, you can, I mean, practice is, 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 uh, uh, on a certain level it becomes more refined, because uh, it's not built on an edifice of, uh, I need this condition, I need this technique, I need to make make the world fit into my perspective. It's around. You realize that there's this truth of the Dhamma, the truth of reality, and there's this capacity of the heart to penetrate it and to let go of all perceptions of self and clinging and that's all you need to do well could you this really comes into my question which was 2005 2006 you led a retreat at a Bayagiri, basically talking about the breath the okay. whole retreat was on the breath and debbie's now turning that into a book and just in conversation you mentioned that you're going to be uh it's not just going to be all those teaching from then but you'll add how you're understanding of breath meditation has changed in the last 15 or 20 15, years. Now. 15, almost 20 years. Yeah, well, I mean, it changed. I mean, you, you know, if you, if you actually live skillfully, you, you, you actually mature and grow up. <laughs> <laughs> As do your meditation practices. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Becomes a bit more, a bit more clear. Uh, it's a natural. Um, you know, it's the, you know the images that, that that the Buddha gives of the kind of the naturalness of of the the the, uh, the sutta where the you know the, the rain falling on the, on mm -hmm. the mountain and then it, it gathering in little little rivulets and then it's gathering in little streams and then 
gather it. You know, the, it, it, it has a naturalness to it mm. uh, that, that is, is uh, um, you know, you not having to fight. You know, it's like, it's not as if you have to fight against fight against Mara and fight against the defilements and it's, it's, it's like that 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 like the boss of well, I know you Mara and, and it, it's not uh, the clarity is there and things fall away could you say a little bit more about that clarity and you talked about just knowing there is this factor that the truth of Dhamma yeah. and then somehow just or just being with that yeah. and uh, could you say a bit more about that just how to be into that or what? Well, it's just recognizing that there is this. I mean, it's 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 intrinsic to us all that we get in the way, uh, and that's exactly you know what the Buddha. You know, what's the actual problem? What's the source of suffering? No greed, hatred, delusion. Um, uh, are are those intrinsic to the mind? No, we 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 add them to the mind. That's like the the Buddha sort of saying that. Uh, uh, the, 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 this this mind bhikkhus is radiant uh, but it is defiled by adventitious defilements uh, it's stained by adventitious defilements it's just uh, visitors uh, and we, we spend our time receiving the visitors and getting caught up in the visitors and forget to pay attention to, to, to sort of the home base mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's a lot of academic speculation about that that sutta. Does that all just fall away? I mean, when you're actually practicing, well, if you or... practice it and you allow your allow, if you allow all of the, because you're trying to figure it out intellectually, mm -hmm. yeah, never going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this is the heart has to taste it. Mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. to feel it. You have mm -hmm. to experience it. It's like Lumpa Cha. <clears throat> he had such a, a way with uh, kind of saying things in a really brief but, but really profound way. He said, first you have to know the Dhamma. Then you have to see the Dhamma. Then you have to be the Dhamma. Mm -hmm. Those are different, different levels of approach. And, and, and uh, a relationship with, with the day. So, you know, you start knowing it, well, that's kind of your, your study, your kind of trying this out, practicing that way, having this technique and that technique. Uh, but then you've got to learn how to, well, how do I use it so that there's a, there's an increased clarity and, and understanding and a, a deepening of the, the, uh, of the insight. And then, and then even that, that's not, that's not the end point. It's just you know, the, the insight. You have to learn how to, to let go, to relinquish, to, mm -hmm. to uh, release, uh, and step into the Dhamma, to be the Dhamma, uh, not have to carry any, uh, any other identity with it. Mm -hmm. Even the identity of uh, me as a monk, me as a layperson, me as a... He is a human being. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> we have quite a few questions that came very quickly. Um, hi, Johns. How long should we stick to a meditation technique? Question mark. How do we know when we should change things up? Only through experience. Mm. Um, there's no, there's nothing's hard and fast. Uh, you have to be willing to experiment. You have to be willing to, you have to be willing to stick with something until it doesn't work. You have to be willing to give up something when it isn't working. But there's no, uh, there's no hard and fast rules. You just have to. You, that's how you 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 gain, ex through through experience, through a trial and error, uh, through being willing to. Yeah, to experiment, um, see, yeah, what works, what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Next, very uh, question I never heard before. Um, is it possible to get enlightened living in a Muslim country where there are no monasteries? Well, you know, I 
mean, these days, the access to <clears throat> the access to to the teachings is 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 really it's accessible. Uh, access to so that living in a Muslim country and committing to a train because the 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 it, the the conditioning factor. You know, even though, as I, I mean, mentioned before, external conditions are important, but still, they're important to the extent that one draws close to people with integrity, people with who, who with goodness, uh, and it's it's kind of like the question that uh, uh Cha asked. <clears throat> uh, I mean, it's a little bit different point, but it but it's similar uh, in that. Uh, Lumpa Cha asking Ajahn Sumedha when he was a young monk, oh, will you ever go back to America as a monk and, and live, live in America as a monk? And, and Ajahn Sumedha went off on this rant of, of uh, oh, no, I'd never go back to America. This America is not a Buddhist country. I could never live in America. They wouldn't look after me. I just starved to death. Then. <laughs> 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 you know, quite. And then Lumpa Cha had this kind of very kind of concerned and <clears throat> compassionate look and he said, You mean there's no good people in America? <coughs> <coughs> you know, and it's that simple. Uh, it's that simple. You know, do you draw close to people with goodness? Uh, or do you you know, there's lots of idiots in America. <laughs> lots of idiots in in in, in, uh, in Thailand, which is supposed to be a Buddhist country. Uh, you have to pay attention to who you who you draw close to. So living in a Muslim country, I mean, you, I mean as I say, these days, <clears throat> the access to, to to teachings is so widely available, and, and uh, but then you know, trying to surround oneself with the conditions that are supportive. <clears throat> Um, yeah, this is a good one. Um, so kind of on the theme of just what is a good person, this idea of metta. So, Venerable Sir, is there a difference between metta and non-hatred? Well, I mean, so, uh, I mean to, to a certain degree, I mean, it's it's helpful to define terms, uh, but yeah, recognize that you are defining terms so that meta uh, and not and like non here like Lopo Semedo uh, spent many years in his early um, teaching career in England defining meta as not dwelling in aversion. Um, because people would con you, you conjure up an idea of meta. Oh, I've got to be, um, you know, I've got to be gushing with loving kindness of every being. If I if I'm going to try to cultivate meta, but and then no possible. So if you can just not dwell in aversion, <laughs> it's a great start, and it's a really perfect foundation. Uh, so that that uh, you know is it uh, is it a non hatred? Well, yes, absolutely. Uh, by definition, it would be non hatred because it's uh, <coughs> like like even in the uh, <coughs> uh, um, the definition of samma sankapa, your definition of right thought. Um, so not uh, dwelling in ill will uh, is is the definite and it's usually but then it's synonymous you start looking at it's a code word for metta looking at it in its positive sense but the Buddha in, in many ways is when you're trying to be precise if you say it is, you know, loving, this loving kindness and goodwill to all, they say, 
Oh, I never had money. <laughs> <laughs> but in order for it to arise and be present and establish itself, the foundation has to be uh, that, that mental formation that is not bound by, by ill will and hatred of aversion. <clears throat> Before you said uh, you recounted that progression of knowing Dhamma, seeing <clears throat> Dhamma, and then being Dhamma. Um, what is Dhamma in that context? Well, Dhamma is, I mean, I mean, it's not just sort of teachings. And, um, it's, not, it's, it's the actual, say, the true nature of things. Mm. You know, being able to know the true nature of things. It's not just knowing. I know the four noble truths. And you know, get the lists all down. <laughs> but it's, I mean, that's part of it. And that's how you begin to lay a foundation. But... Uh, uh, but it's more kn knowing, because that's more part of seeing Dhamma, maybe. I mean, it's a, that sense of, of uh, that it really starting to, mm, one's conception of Dhamma uh, shifting into uh, an experiential, uh, experiential touching on, on the, the true nature of things. And the, 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 that flavor of peace and clarity that's that's possible <clears throat> one time for one final question um, are there any misunderstandings of buddhism that have developed as it comes to the west uh, that you would correct that you would correct yeah. that i would correct yeah oh well i don't know i'm not on a mission <laughs> um, uh, you no, know, the uh, you know, sort of, because I, I, uh, you know, one of the misconceptions, of course, is that um, you know, say monasteries and monastic practice are 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 selfish, um, and uh, you know that certainly. Uh, uh, or that Buddhist practice is selfish, uh, by extension, uh, and there's you know there's plenty of that 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 kind of um, perception, um, misconception, uh, and that that, that uh, you know to re you know if you're really practicing the precepts, practicing um, generosity and giving, and practicing right action. Uh, right livelihood, uh, you're really attuned to the the communication of this human existence, and uh, and how we have to care for each other as well as care for the environment around us. <clears throat> so it's uh, you know it's very much a, a uh, an unselfish endeavor uh, that is is required to. To progress, progress on the path. Yeah. Yeah, in terms of, I mean, the environmental effects of being a monastic. I mean, just living, visiting a place like a Bayaguj, that's a such a simple place in the monastics and living so so simply. It's just a really good, yeah. good model. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that you see that there are, yeah, there are examples of, of people who live skillful lives. It's a, that's a useful thing, uh, rather than, again, trying to be on a mission and trying to convert people to the true way. <laughs> <laughs> Malpar, what would you say to two young monks on a mission to maybe uh, start a community in Seattle? <laughs> patience, <laughs> patience, patience. <laughs> do it slowly, do it, and put your foundations, your solid um, base of, of, of integrity and, and, uh, and skill in the, in, the, in the fundamentals. Thank you so much, Long for Okay. Yeah, great to be here. <clears throat> so um, we'll be uh, just wrapping up now. And for those who uh, are familiar with our format, we'll, you may join um, me on Zoom 
I'll post the link in the chat, and if you can't see it, just visit clearmountainmonastery.org, and halfway down the page, there's a link to the Wednesday evening live stream where the Zoom link is, and uh, we'll see all of you there. Um, we'll also have teachings on Thursday evening, Friday evening, and the large ceremony teaching Saturday, so you can see that on the website. Longpore, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, yeah, good to join.